only because we're buying it that it becomes popular. Much like the only way Whitney Houston got popular is because we bought her records. But it, but it is a culture, and here's the culture. It's a culture of fear. Right. We are a terrified nation, and everything that is sold to us is done out of fear. And everything that we do to ourselves is done out of fear. And everything that we feel about somebody else that's negative is done out of fear. We are a terrified nation. You're not going to change the system overnight. And I get that angst. I get that that teenage kind of like, I want the world and I want it now. And that's awesome. And that's inspired a lot of great stuff. But you have to take a step back and see, if I really want to change... If I really want change, I need to take a long view and realize that it's not going to happen overnight. And this is such an amazing place to be because there's so much hope here. It's just the hope of being an American. And that's why I get so disappointed when people don't know the true meaning of being American. You know, it's the hope of it all. That there are possibilities out there. And... You know, just because I'm American doesn't mean that I get the American dream and I get to be rich with a house and all this. I get to be happy on my own terms. I choose my happiness. We trust everyone to give themselves a chance for us to help them, help themselves, regardless of what your race, creed, color, color is. Right. We, we allow, the people come to America, immigrants come here, for the very same reason. The promise. The promise. The promise land. They raise you to look a certain way, act a certain way, talk a certain way, marry a certain way, and do all of that. And here, you just be yourself, and people who truly love you, they, they accept you. You can be gay, you can be straight, you can be loud, you can be obnoxious, you can be, you can be whatever you want to be, and you can live your life. In Iran, you don't have that. You don't have a choice. You just have to be a certain way, and it sucks. I think racism is alive. <laughs> uh, I think it's a big part of America. It's, it's part of our history. It's part of the present. It's going to be part of the future. But it's not only part of America, it's part of the world. For me, it's, it's, a, it's just a basic civil rights. Mm. And when a group of people do not have those rights. It's not about whether you think two men or two women should marry, but now you're saying that I can live in your country and you can tolerate me. Right. And I could yeah. I could work and I can pay taxes and I could obey the laws, but because I grew up or I was born loving the same sex, I shouldn't be able to get married. It's that that part is mind boggling to me. I don't get why you wouldn't want other people to have health insurance. I don't get it. I mean, I can I can pretend to understand, well, we're all different, we all have different values, um, but I don't get people that refuse to accept that we are an ecosystem and we're all dependent on each other. We are Americans. I mean, what's great about America is that we're not constrained to feel like we have to be, you know, little, like, you know, single file rows of things. We're able to be all over the place. So we're incredibly cr creative people. We can, we don't need to say Sweden's system is being copied or the UK system or Canada system or even Massachusetts, we're gonna copy that. We are smart enough in this country to do something better. And you know what, what he did, I mean, God, saying that you can't, because you have a pre-existing condition, that you can't be denied coverage, people have a problem with this, I don't get it. Best thing in America, is the opportunities. It is the land of the opportunities. And you can get three or four jobs, like I'm a dog walker, I give massages, I'm an artist. Like you have to do. A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do to survive. I feel very, very sad and uh, just uh, surprised me how um, our government is uh, cutting the education budget over and over. How much more can they cut? I mean, California. How much more budget can they cut from the school and, uh, you know, take that away from the children, which is our future? Right. And what are they doing with that money? You know, like, I mean... The two war we've been fighting for yeah. this long. And then, but now we have children who are going to be undereducated, overweight, and sick so that we could go to war. So, I don't know that that's worth it. Like we're staying in a hotel uh, on the side of a hill in, in Oaxaca. 
and um, I had specifically what you know when I was making the arrangements the woman said well this is this this lovely hotel it's not in the city it's a little you know you have to take a cab but it's on the side of a mountain and the whole city is laid out at you and I said oh my gosh that's exactly you know fabulous so I go running into the hotel and um, it was Christmas Day. We arrived on Christmas Day, and it was the end of the day. We've been traveling, you know, all day. And we get to the hotel, and it's just starting to get dark. And I run into my room, and I run out into the balcony, and it's the sun is just setting. It's starting to get dark. The lights are on in the city. And what is the one thing that I can see from my balcony? What? The golden arches. <laughs> Oh my if that I doesn't thinking, say it. I was like, what? It's the United States Department of Agriculture. They're there to promote agriculture. They're not there to promote what's healthy. I mean, I was on the board once to develop the new food pyramid. And uh, they threw me out after about two weeks. I was the only scientist, and I use that term loosely for me, I'm a physician, uh, that was on the panel. The rest were all special interest group people. People from the Aid Council, the Dairy Council, the Meat Council, the corn council. I mean, it was, it was quite fascinating. We had to have word of mouth, flyers, and telephones. We got internet, we got apps and shit on our phone, and we can connect with people 300,000 miles away to say, listen, we doing a food for How much do it cost in your state for this? How much do it cost in your state for that? We pulled our money together, and we're going to send you the money, and what's what we need you to get, and we need you to ship it to us. Matter of fact, we need you to draw that shit over here, and we need to divvy it up, and we need to work together. And can't tell me it won't work unless you try it. I'm not convinced by it, I'll be honest with you. But you haven't tried it. I've, I've looked at it. You passing out flyers, and you ain't got a group together and say, let's pull our resources to make lunch for these kids no, that I don't have no, access. Don't. The so then I don't want to hear about no black leadership. I don't want to hear right that now. shit. Who does right now? Who does? I do. What you got? It's here. What, I just uh, gave you the plan, man. I think people view politicians or any p person in power as a superhuman or above human person. What they fail to realize is that um, they're people just like us. They have uh, the same fears, the same insecurities, the same dreams and goals as anybody else. Also, they possess the same faults. I think if more people realize this, um, things would be better not to put people on a pedestal and think they're better because they're in a position of power. Freedom. Mm. You know, freedom, independence, being able to do whatever I want to do, freedom of speech, freedom to write any book I want to write, make any film I want to make, do whatever I want to do in the world. It's the greatest country in the world. It really is. Um, <laughs> really, I don't need help, I got Re this. Um, <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs>